Musically Meditated. Musically Meditated. Musically Meditated. Welcome to Musically Meditated Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Riley. I have my co-host with me, Sretton. What's up, man? Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm great. Good. This is a, 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 an episode where we're going to focus on shoegaze, and we're going to call this one Shoegaze 101. I have my man with the master plan here to my side, Mr. John Metcalf. How you doing, John? Doing all right. Great, man. Uh, real quick, everyone listening, uh, you know, follow, subscribe to Musically Meditated on all podcast listening platforms and YouTube. But also, don't forget to subscribe to John's podcast. And John, could you tell us about your podcast a little bit? Uh, my podcast is called GG Stalin and the Absurdity Junkies. Um, it's uh, was started as a, a political uh, news discussion podcast, but from kind of uh, the dirt bag left uh, perspective, <laughs> that's the like the the coined phrase. Um, so it, it's it's less uh, we've had a lot less episodes about you know like the news of the day and like in depth politics, but I think um, anything you know anything we shoot the shit about, we always try to like pull it back to you know like a, a leftist commentary on it. So. Uh, Awesome, awesome. Yeah, Brett Brett Short is with you. We've had Brett here on Musically Meditated for a couple of lyrical episodes. And Ed Davini. We're mm-hmm. going to bring Ed on Musically Meditated, too. So you guys are a part of the Green Door Network, right, Sret? Yeah. Are they officially mm-hmm. a part? They are a part of it. Okay. I haven't officially finished the <laughs> website yet. Uh, okay. So that's we're, where the issue comes in. Yeah, we're going to, yeah. Then then we'll have a Green Door website. a Green Door party and have you guys there. Oh, okay. Awesome, awesome. Cool. Um, But yeah, this is going to be Shoegaze 101. And we'll start off, well, shoegaze is a, a subgenre of rock and roll. Keep it really basic. But, mm-hmm. John, uh, could you start off with your personal shoegaze story and what got you into it? Ooh, what got me into shoegaze? I think I I discovered it pretty late, like uh, early, uh, late teens, early, like, a, you know, early 20s. Um, I think what primed me for, like, for getting into it was, uh, I think, the fact that, like, my mom was really into, like, like that new new agey like you know pure mood shit like <laughs> boomer hippie stuff and Yanni Yanni yeah, a little, oh, not not, oh, yeah, Yanni. not Yanni as much as like Enya ooh and so it's like a bunch of stuff that she didn't she didn't get that into it yeah nah, yeah <laughs> but no I mean like uh, and so like uh, there was like another like there was one like especially I I forget who did it but it was like this like radiant it was like this like um like ambient new age album but it was all about like aligning your chakras that was like the whole theme and there was like that's pretty deep mantras and then like chanting and then it was just like a bunch of like ethereal synth stuff and she would play that a lot and uh that one it's like and so this like <laughs> it was all this like goofy boomer cheesy shit but i mean especially in like the case of like enya like that was someone who was probably directly influenced by like cocteau twins uh, okay. for example and so it was just like all that '90s new age stuff was just dream pop that just you know had its teeth removed. That was like shitty, basically. Any other particular <clears throat> particular bands? Excuse me. Like, um, well, I think I, I didn't know who they were at the time, but like I remember uh, late nights in Q and One in like '98. Like they would play like some MBV. Okay. Like I, I think I heard like only shallow a bunch by my by my bloody Valentine. Yeah. Okay. By, by, by my by my bloody Valentine. Yeah. Okay, it's kind of a tongue twister, ain't it? Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> on there. My bloody my bloody Valentine. Um, and so like I, I think like uh around like my late teens, uh, though I, I think it was like right when the internet when we finally got broadband in Highland. What? And, like, <laughs> <laughs> big deal. And and so I was able to like actually like. I, I could go find stuff that, like, I couldn't, you know, just, like, randomly stumble on an S&J and stuff that, you know, people weren't necessarily, like, talking about in, like, the one rock magazine I I, I was looking at, which is Rolling Stone, you know? But, no hit parader? No, not a hit parader, oh, no. Man. But, like, again, like, you know, like, internet music journalism started up. Like, I started reading Pitchfork and stuff. And so I started, you know, actually, like, actively searching out and, like, making up for lost time. And, going, and you know, shoegaze was something that I had, you know, I had heard and seen in articles and, um there was uh one thing that was like formative in me like finding my musical taste was uh not the original napster but when they brought oh, napster here we go. napster always comes back when they brought napster back as a pay thing it was the only one that you could like listen uh to um free like just 30 second preview so i would just like type in a genre and then 
look through all the bands and at least get myself 30 seconds. Because this is before people were uploading a bunch of albums to YouTube even yet. Okay, I remember that. Mm-hmm. Remember this is in time. Yeah, this is in YouTube was like still just like two minute clips of like your baby's uh, like birthday. <laughs> I remember Cats that. falling down the stairs. Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of animal videos. And so I don't know. Good old days. <laughs> the yeah. Good old days. But it's like, I, I think it, it in certain times in my life, and especially like as, you know, like a shy, you know, like introspective, you know, like young adult, like late teen, it was just, you know, in certain situations and, you know, certain like times and moods, it was like, you know, a genre that like, you know, really just like clicked with me. And uh, like, and then I have a more personal story for why I'm in, uh, like, I especially got into Lush. Okay. That's because I, I like the, you know time i lost my virginity was uh uh <laughs> is i put in the shoe He's gaze deep. <laughs> i put in you shoe... lost your virginity to, to lush uh yeah it was like awesome. um this is yeah great. it this was uh <laughs> deluxe okay yeah was uh was playing on this uh pandora station that i just threw on i was 19 when it happened <laughs> and uh and then uh smile on his face. <laughs> he remembers it i remember yeah and it was like I was like, damn, this is like cinematic. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. That's good. I think I lost my virginity to Cannibal Corpse Tomb of the Mutilated. Mutilated. I lost mine to total silence. Silence. Yeah, I don't nice. think I was listening to any music. But silence. Uh, but at any rate, um, we mentioned it before off mic. Uh, Sretton, you might be able to relate to this too. But Smashing Pumpkins, I think you know, like they're a a, a subgenre off of shoegaze, but. Like going back, not knowing what shoegaze was then, like I wasn't the biggest Smashing Pumpkins yeah. fan either, but they're definitely a heavily shoegaze influenced band. Yeah, for I like, mean at least Siamese Dream. Siamese Dream, yeah, yeah. Like melancholy, the, not so much. But the guitar, right? Yeah, wouldn't you say the guitar? Mm-hmm. Okay, um, and guess who else? Threaten you'll never guess Deftones. Um, <laughs> you know that's that's when like we should probably do an episode on them. Huh? Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've done a few. Uh, I mean, even if it's like. Even if it's not always, you know, present. I mean, there's a lot of songs that's present in the guitar. There's like the reverby, washed out kind of thing. But um, like anytime he's not like rapping or screaming, Chino's vocals are pretty much like in that like yeah, shoegaze in uh, that shoegaze realm. A mm-hmm. uh, little bit of uh, around the fur, like obviously, be quiet and drive. Those those yeah. those chords are shoegazy. I remember Die of the Flu has some shoegazy stuff going on too, but more so White Pony. We just did a, a White Pony yeah, episode. Definitely. Last week, uh, you know, Pink Maggot, you know, and that's where I started to see that term, like reading, like you said, like when you were really into a band when you were younger, you would read everything you could about them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I would see that term pop up. And then the older I got too, like, then you could click on it on Wikipedia and then it would show you a list of the bands, you know? So I'm like, huh, what's this? And then reading those articles, Hum, you know, from Illinois, they're, they're a rock, they're a rock, but they have like these shoegazy elements to them too yeah you know and then more importantly you know i got into nothing and i i ran into nothing because relapse started to not just put out death metal and black metal and extreme stuff and i was oh, okay. i was searching on relapse and then i saw that term shoegaze this is probably in like i don't know 2012 2013 and um they had down year downward years to come And that's like a little EP that they put out, but that particular track. And I clicked on that and I was like, whoa, this is awesome. Like, so that's what it is. And then I just fell into that wormhole, Mm -hmm. you know, like on Spotify and just started to find all these started to find all these different types of shoegaze bands. But, Mm -hmm. you know, nothing was a big one for me. And that wasn't that long ago. Like I said, like 2013, 2014. Mm -hmm. And then they released uh, Guilty of Everything. And I love that album. Yeah, I, I uh, just uh, actually listened for the first time today, and it's really, really good. Did you like it? Yeah. Okay, cool. You'd say it's shoegazy, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. okay. And then, uh, obviously, Cloak Room, and we had Bobby Marcos on here. Uh, I think it was like episode 27. So people that are listening, if you like shoegaze and you want to hear some uh, some cool stories from Bobby like in relation to a lot of shoegaze bands. And we talked a little bit too, like about Swerve Driver. That was a good episode for it, ain't it, Stratton? Yeah, yeah. So that's like the last time we really touched on on shoegaze. So it is it is uh, the scene that celebrates itself, or so they say. So it's kind of a little pretentious, wouldn't you say? A little yeah. artsy-fartsy? I mean, yeah, a, a lot of the, you know, lyrics are, you know, just like, they're they're breathlessly sung, but they're like a lot about, you know, just like yourself and like your own, like, existential problems and 
Right. Yeah. Well, Sretton, do you like the vocals for shoegaze? They forgot co- uh, uh, sugar and creamer <laughs> in my coffee at the drive-thru. I'm going to write an album about it. <laughs> so you're not a fan? Oh, that's what you it, asked me. It, okay. I, I wouldn't say that that's like, it, it's not like, it's not mopey in that way. It's like mopey in the way of like, of like, well, you know, romance can never exist because, you know, we're all just like cosmic dust and well, yeah. whatever. It's very spacey. Yeah. But shoegazing or shoegazes, initially, it was initially known as dream pop, right? Which yeah. is a subgenre of indie and alternative rock. Mm-hmm. And it came out of the UK in the late 80s. Yeah. So that's the background, like if you really want to break it down. And what about dream pop? You were talking about that earlier. Uh, the Cocteau, twi- or Cocteau Twins. Yeah, um, they, they they were kind of dream poppy, like that '80s stuff. Yeah, I well, I mean, they started out being more like a post punk, almost like goth kind of, because they, you know, like you said, they were, well, uh, and like you know, they said that they were like influenced by Susie and the Banshees, of of course, and more like Susie when Susie's at her more like um like psychedelic, like '60s influenced, and and that's another thing is like shoegaze is very indebted to like '60s psychedelia. I and agree. like 60s folk rock because it's a lot of shoegaze if you took all the effects out it would just be folk songs it would it would them, and yeah. uh the velvet underground for sure yeah right i mean that's mm-hmm. if you really want to break it down and, and and dig deep and be a nerd about it like we are mm-hmm. i would say the velvet underground would be like the first yeah. shoegazy band like with the guitar chords right yeah yeah i mean lou reed obviously was a poet so the vocals aren't anything like that but mm-hmm. you know like i think they're one of the first in my opinion. Yeah. And with that I, 60s I could, I could pop, grant you, that, you yeah. know? So uh, another thing, too, this term, it, it came from, like, them looking at their feet when they played. Right? Yeah. It was, it, that's another thing about it. It's like, because it, it, shoegaze is, like, what they call themselves is, like, what people, like, detract them with. So it's, <laughs> like, it explains the whole, like, you know, self, you know, non deferential you know like self-deprecating attitude yeah. of the whole thing they're just unattached non-confrontational they had their heads down just kind of like Meh. you know we're yeah. up here but really what they were doing is there's a lot of heavy guitar effects yeah so I they're mean, always stepping on pedals right. looking at their it's kind of it, 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 it's like a, it's double meaning it's like it's you're always looking at your feet and like you're also like the wallflower just looking at the floor because you know you're <laughs> shy and withdrawn that's what i remember about seeing nothing for the first time uh their bass player his name's nick he was doing that, and I was like, that's weird stage presence, but whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, just kind of like nonchalant about everything and just, mm-hmm. eh. but the music was awesome. So yeah. at any rate, we said the Cock 2 Twins, like yeah. going back to some early sighted. Yeah, it was, know, it was. I think uh, their um, their third album. Um, um, Wax and Wayne, and that's my favorite song by them. That's yeah, I would say album. that. Uh, yeah, I would say that's not really what I would consider the dream pop like era. Okay. Yeah, you that's, said it was their third. Yeah, their third album. Um... Uh oh. Oh, you asked me, Joe. Yeah. Did I like this? Yeah. So. Yeah, let's let's hear your little. I like twenty percent of it. Okay. If I had to put a way to sell it for the listener, if I had to put a number to it. <laughs> well, but yeah, you gotta, it's okay. you gotta get into a certain thing. I I took in a lot of it the last couple of days. It's a okay. lot, and it's. There's a lot of genres where I don't like the majority of it, but there's some of them that I really like. Okay. So uh, before we started recording, John said that a lot of the music is situational, I guess. I'm putting words in his mouth mm-hmm. where you need to like you need to set up the, the, the way that you listen. So like like we've talked about before, you're driving in your car or right before a workout or during a workout, whatever. This stuff is kind of the same thing. Yeah, it's not before yeah. a workout or to pump you up. It's a good no. thing to to oh yeah, you know, meditate to or go to bed or re- yeah. Reflective. It's like I I say like it's like the perfect music for like like an autumn drive on like Highway Twenty or something. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. When you're just like in your thoughts and like I, again, like one of the things that like that drew me to it is that like I'd never really heard these bands before, but especially with like Cocteau Twins and they're like a lot more like new agey, you know, like you know, like celestial, yeah. And, like, um, is that like it would again like it would re- it reminded me of like that like you know new age stuff in the house all the time even though it preceded it it made me you know nostalgic for that time I guess and like shoegaze just all shoegaze makes me nostalgic for maybe like moments that I didn't even really like live in but like it's like it's that kind of like <laughs> yeah. you know like introspective like yeah you know in your in your in your thoughts and your feelings like kinda. rainy rainy day music and uh, yeah. another another early earlier band I think that had an influence was the Jesus and the Mary Chain who I love. Oh, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. for sure. 
and like we said, My Bloody Valentine, and we'll get into them. Mm -hmm. And some other indie bands from the 90s or late 80s, like Dinosaur Jr. and Sonic Youth, for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, Sonic Youth definitely, like, um, laid a ground. And, like, I, I forget who said it, but, um, like, they, like, using a guitar, um, like, new uses for a guitar was what Sonic Youth was, Youth was about. And so it's, it's you know, like, ed, like weird dissonance and, and, and like, a adding, like, well, again, like it was mu like stuff like music concrete and like actual like, you know, art, like art, uh, like music, you know, like weird art music from the 60s, like music concrete and and um, stuff like that made its way into like art rock with, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, with Lou Reed, mm -hmm. uh, especially like Velvet Underground, Velvet Underground, Metal Machine music, especially. Um, and then from there, it, you know, it became like after punk. Then it was like noise, like the noise rock of Sonic Youth, and that was, you know, a big influence on the rest of this. And so, yeah, absolutely. Uh, a couple other ones too, Husker Du. You know, they're mm -hmm. in there. I know that they're from uh, Minnesota. Like uh -huh. they had some shoegazy elements behind yeah, their guitar. Yeah, they definitely the guitar like, chords. Yeah, dissonance and like that washed out kind of yeah. feel. Yeah, my favorite track by them is like Candy Apple Gray. I think mm -hmm. it's called. And then obviously the Cure, and I, I'm sure you knew this, but uh, I would say Faith. Faith, Definitely, yeah, but yeah. Robert Smith was the guitarist for Susie and the Banshees for, for a little a bit, second, yeah. you know, and mm -hmm. you know they say that he kind of stole his look and style from them. But it was, whatever. yeah, it was, it was right when he joined. Then like he came back and his hair was longer. It was like more sprayed up. He had more makeup on. Yeah, but he was. Yeah, he's he's an influence to to like more maybe like the dream poppy. Yeah, I would say elements. like there's yeah there's always there's two tendencies that like dream pop was the name that was you know given to the whole genre and then it. I'd say now if you say dream pop, it means more like the kind of, you know, more like celestial or like, uh, you know, ethereal stuff. Whereas like shoegaze is the more like, you know, like a, like um, wall of, you know, like the, the more like in your face wall of, of sound kind of mm -hmm. like the more I guess it's the either cocktail or my bloody Valentine. Those are the two types. Right. The yeah. two types. And uh, which I'm going to call it, you know, we'll, we'll do that right now. Well, no. Real quick, here's a little tidbit. Slow Dive actually got their name for their band from uh, a Su Susie and the yep. Banshee song. From uh, uh, Kiss in the Dream House. Is that what it yep. is? And Stratton, you said you did like Slow Dive. I do, yeah. Okay. I did. And they, they came out with a great album last year. Did you listen to that yet? The, the I did, yeah. Cool. It's, uh, it, and it, it doesn't have that like that like we're getting back together like 20 years later slump that a lot of people do. Yeah, I agree. It actually, they, they, they knocked it out of the park. That's a really good... Uh, album for everybody to check out it's super yeah. chill what's it called slow dive it's, yeah, it's just self-titled self oh, okay, okay. yeah it's just self-titled i actually got that uh on vinyl like a japanese version so i'm looking forward to to spinning that but now we'll just transition into my bloody valentine you know mm -hmm. um they're known for their like dissonant guitar textures their weird melody their unorthodox production and uh you know it definitely helped pioneer the alternative rock sound and they are primarily irish and I think they have a yep. few English. Kevin Shields is, I know, Irish. I forget who else is Irish. And then the rest is, everybody's English. Yeah. They're from Dublin. Um, they emerged in 1988 and they dropped Isn't Anything. Then they dropped their EP Tremolo. And uh, did, I know I asked you this before, but did Brian, e was he behind that or was he behind Loveless? He was Brian behind Eno? Loveless, yeah. Okay. And he's just a huge pioneer of sound and recording yeah, anyway yeah pioneer of like uh, unorthodox you know like um production and engineering techniques to... and god flesh and mm -hmm. so on and so forth yeah so that says a lot right there um then they also dropped their first ep glider in 1990 which i really really like you know it's just a teeny it's got a cool little uh, cool album mm -hmm. cover but i really like the music for that one you know like mm -hmm. after i went back to uh loveless but then they finally came out in loveless in 1992 and a little backtrack on this, Threaten, you said it earlier. It took them two years to record this and cost uh, the record company a half million dollars. Yeah, so that that's again why why it's what was seen as pretentious. <laughs> Just a little pretentious, yeah. but you know, when you when you look into that and you listen to this album, uh it it, it comes off. You know, like it, it mm -hmm. I'm glad that they did it because I've never heard anything sound like this, and especially the guitars and the production and the warmth of the guitars. Even the drums, like the snare taps, are crazy. You know, it's kind of poppy. It has that 60s, yeah, like little 60s sensibility. Yeah, right? it's like you can always hear, like in a lot of tracks, like you'll hear, like, you know, like the throbbing, like buzz, but then you'll hear, like, the, the, um, uh, the, 
acoustic guitar in the back and mm-hmm. it's just like it you can it operates both quiet you can turn it up or you can like turn it low and like it operates on those two levels right right um, stretton and, and you said it was a hard listen for you yeah okay i don't know why i guess i just couldn't find i couldn't find the music like i would listen and i would i i'd be like what is this <laughs> and i kept skipping you know i kept skipping the next song next song to see something that would like hook me something that I don't need a hook every time, but something it was it was like too ethereal. It was like it was like walking through fog. It was. It's a very foggy, foggy record. Yeah. Um, but yeah, cloudy rhythms, hush melodies, drowning guitars, and and more importantly, like I think shoegaze more than any other genre in rock. I I love the female vocals behind it. Yeah, and 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 sometimes it's just like in in both female and male vocals a lot of times it's like a half and half between like a band will have two singers one female one male and a lot of times like the way that they're both singing is you know pretty androgynous so it's like oh who is this again like oh okay it's this vocalist yeah yeah and hushed in the back but i i think it works well you know like the vocals especially. on all this stuff i do like you do like yeah i like okay. the vocals on all mm-hmm. this stuff and the trade-off too like you mentioned it's perfect with this who's Who's the other guy singing? Is that the main guitarist? That's Kevin Shields. That's Kevin Shields. And he does a great job, too, because with some of the newer shoegazy stuff, like the vocals aren't that great, you know, but I think they're obviously more in the background. But Mm -hmm. I just love the way this album is uh, produced and how they're blended. You know, Um, like I said, uh, the guitar tone, too, is something like I don't want to compare this to like Dimebag from Pantera, but just as an example you know, when you hear Dimebag's tone, you know it's Dimebag. Mm-hmm. And there's something about the tone of this guitar that's like razor sharp. It like reminds me of like, I don't know, a bunch of razors cutting roses or something or like cutting meat. I don't know. It might sound crazy. Yeah, but, I mean, but, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't describe it. It was like like <laughs> razors cutting roses meat. meat. Yeah. Like, I, I'd say it's more like, I don't know, just like a bunch of like. Uh, like I, I like just a bunch of like dots like lighting up at the same time and they're all doing their own thing, but they're all doing, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking of like a bunch of razors being like, I don't know, like a razor tornado and just cutting through like well, rose say, bushes and birthday cakes. I wouldn't cakes. say it's that harsh of noise though. It's more like. It's a little bit more subtle, right? Yeah. Yeah. But there's something about it. Like what's the mm-hmm. first track on Loveless? Like that guitar tone and like the. Only weeping. Shallow? Or, yeah. Or, or, yeah. Or, or what's it? Uh, when You Sleep, I forget. Yeah. The opening track. It's just Which like. Which one is it? The. Well, yeah, yeah, but like, oh, when, I know, yeah, when you, oh, yeah, yeah, when it comes in, it's just like, holy yeah, shit. Yeah, and it, it's, they kind of got the whole like Pixies, like loud, quiet, loud on that album. Yes, too. I love it. I love it. Um, with a lot of people like that I've shown newer shoegaze to, they can't handle the vocals being in the background and being hush. But I believe that like I, I, I can handle it because not all of my music has to have the like the singer up close and yeah, personal. Exactly. And I, I attribute a lot of that to like growing up listening to death metal and black metal because it's another layer Mm -hmm. to the music as far as just sound goes. And I think it might freak people out. Like you said, you liked it, Sretton, but it might freak people out because it's not up front. It's in the back. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So speaking of, uh, of black metal and shoegaze, uh, um, what do you think about, um, the black gaze scene? Yeah. The black gaze are, um, you know, What's their name? Why Death am I Heaven? blanking? Deaf Heaven. Thank I love Deaf Heaven. Yeah. Yeah. We did an episode on uh, Deaf Heaven. Um, what? Oh, yeah. Sunbather. Sun, like, yeah. Sunbather is definitely. See, that kind of fell into my lap, too, when nothing did. I think Sun. I think uh, Sunbather came out right around the same time or maybe a little bit before. Mm-hmm. So I wish I would have mentioned them in the beginning, but absolutely. Yeah. And a lot of traditional black metal people, they hate it. You know, yeah. there's a lot of people that don't like to mix the genres, but I think it's a great sound. Yeah. I think it's been done before, but not on much as a, like a commercial level. And, you know, with that earlier, I can't remember the band's names that maybe did it in the 90s or something mm-hmm. before Def Heaven. But uh, they pulled it off well. Like, yeah. That's a great album. Because it's like it's like shoegaze chords and like shoegaze a little. It's like shoegaze chords, but it's like Def uh like death metal or black metal um vocals yeah black metal vocals black metal drums and then black metal uh uh yeah you know, um like guitar effects like yeah it's, black metal it, distortion it's a really cool mm-hmm. mix you know and I like their album that their last few albums that they came out with they I can't remember the name that the name of the one that came out this year but mm-hmm. then they had another one that was great but yeah I I love how they mix that together like the two different sounds but back to the vocals 
um, there's like I said, there's a lot of people who are like, oh, blah, 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 that sucks. But playing devil's advocate too, uh, it might take away from those kind of vocals might take away from the talent of like, you know, like anyone could maybe kind of hush right, and be in the background and like put on some effects. So I get where. But also, I mean, also no one ever just sings in a shoegaze band. They're always the guitarist too. So true. Yeah. There's never just been a vocalist, right? Nope. Yeah, good point, John. Great, Great job. point, John. Great job. <laughs> yeah, there probably there hasn't, has there? No. Damn. All right. Um, I mean, looking back, yeah. Yeah, not at all. Let's get into some of some of our bands, and John, we'll start off with your your favorite shoegaze bands or your top five albums. Um, top five albums are uh, Lush Spooky. Um, uh, the one you lost your virginity to. Oh no! Actually, Spooky doesn't have a uh, Spooky doesn't have deluxe on it. Okay. Um, Lush Spooky is the one that uh was like the soundtrack to like my first serious breakup. Okay. And I'll get to that. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, take so your time. take your time. Then um, My Bloody Valentine, uh, Loveless, uh, Suvlaki, uh, Cocteau Twins, um, Blue Bell Knoll, Blue Bell Knoll. Okay. And uh, you had A R Kane. A R Kane. Oh, A R Kane. I I brought up there. Sixty nine isn't like my favorite album, but I just thought like they're kind of an underappreciated band. And again, they were like a missing link in the whole thing. Is that like, uh, is that they were influenced by they they were more of like a, like kind of like a, they had like jazz or jazz or like funk and like uh, post punk like tendencies at first, and then they heard you know um uh Cocteau Twins, and then they kind of decided to you know make make their guitars you know the kind of like washed out ethereal thing um and that was you know a big tendency on 69 the next album after that was a lot more like um like indie dance yeah that was kind of a hard listen for me i wasn't i didn't yeah, know what so to like, expect with them like I'll, 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 i i i like a a lot of the a lot of the tracks are on that one are more like um like experimental like post rock kind of stuff okay. but then in the ones that have like actual like you know conventional drumming again that's like oh Wow, this is definitely uh, a big influence on like on Kevin Shields and and um. So they were before, obviously. Yeah, they were. They were earlier. like, yeah, they were a little bit before, and they were the first ones called Dream Pop, actually. Oh, really? The press, yeah. Okay. And they were two black guys too. Really? And so it's like that's kind of where were they from? Do you remember? Uh, London. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. One of them is a Nigerian immigrant. Awesome. I think Nigerian. Here we go with the Brits, Sorry. man. They're just they ruling. Aren't. They're ruling the shoegaze scene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it's like it was kind of like oh like the like hidden black not hidden but it's like they're they're not really that well known and so it's like the hidden black history of shoegaze or it's like you know <laughs> right. death with punk a little bit right. ago yeah too. Right. So. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the early death shit from Detroit, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody thought it was the Ramones but it was really death. First punk rock band. Yeah. But uh let's get into the Drop 19s a little bit that Delaware album. Now you sent me your list. Mm-hmm. And I was impressed, man. I'd never heard about them. And you said, yeah, American, I actually, right? I just, I learned about them a year and a half ago from Spotify. Okay. Yeah. Like I had no, um, I had no, uh, that was the first time I ever heard them. And it was, uh, um, what, uh, kick the disease. Okay. Which, uh, not kick the disease. Uh, damn it. Delaware. Yeah. No, it was, it was off Delaware, but I put it on. Yeah. We we're definitely going to have a, uh, which we call it for playlist? this to a playlist. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So they're on there. Sret and listen to it. Mm-hmm. He rocked it, it all day, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they yeah they're... it was uh, but like that one, it was just like that was just like a like it, it's kind of just like the same like the same couple chords, but then they like build and get a little different, and then there's like that the that, that stop, and then there's a little monologue, and it's like you know just perfectly encapsulates That's what I like about it because it's like you know wistful youth and and like you know just being like like aimless and on the cusp of something new, and then and then it gets back in, and then there's like the like the the big chord change and then it's like even though it's really subtle it like hits you really hard coming back in it does i i like the bass a lot on that album on Delaware. yes the yeah. bass really it was a good backbone and the drums were a little bit poppy but at times they would speed up i think that's what's important with some of these uh some of these shoegaze bands like it's nice to switch up the tempo and not be mm-hmm. you know just lollygagging around just, yeah, just kick, make it a little exciting. Kick the tragedy, not kick the disease. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. kick the tragedy is that track, and then um, what's uh, happen is another one. It's like that. That was a, like a thing about Drop Nineteens is that they kind of had more, even though like everyone talks about grunge like overtaking 
shoegaze like they were like kind of incorporating like uh, the 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 beginnings of that and like a little bit of like uh on the song happen it's like some like post hardcore like almost like sunny day real estate i love but, sunny day real estate but yeah. also that that you know washed out you know yeah the sunny day real estate had some shoegazy influences and in i'm for yeah, sure a little bit yeah a little bit but i like that blend of shoegaze and post punk, or yeah, or, or like a, especially like um, uh, American football. Yeah, they're a little, cool. A little bit of that too. They're a little emo. Yeah, a little bit emo, or mm-hmm. like Mineral. Do you ever listen to Old Mineral? Yeah. Okay. I mean, well, well, here's it's like post hardcore is just what we call the emo bands that were good and not embarrassing, <laughs> is what I've noticed. <laughs> it's like Sunny Day Real Estate. No, they're post hardcore. They're not emo. They're not emo. Don't go there. Thursday isn't emo anymore. People call them post hardcore in, in retrospect. Yeah, but they were. Yeah. Back yeah. in 2004 when they came out, they were emo, but now mm-hmm. they're post-hardcore. Yeah. I follow you. I follow you. But how about that Lush Spooky? You want to get into that story? Lush Spooky. Okay. Um, that like just like just let's, let's get the dirt. Just like Drop 19's uh, kind of incor- start incorporating more like uh, like where, you know, what rock was like bubbling up post-shoegaze. Uh, um, they they were always had a little bit of a Brit, like the Brit pop was supposed to have killed shoegaze, but um uh lush always had a little bit of brit pop in it especially like um especially like a super blast off of this album is like just like this like kind of like 60s like power pop but like all washed out and like driving and like upbeat but still you know female vocals for lush too correct? yeah two okay. female vocals two female lush, okay yeah. okay yeah it, uh i you know like you said like going through the the wormhole of spotify or mm-hmm. wikipedia they were always popping up but that particular album, Spooky, like that's my favorite out of all their stuff. Yeah. You know. And it's like and they're one of the the few ones where you can like make out most of their lyrics and like the whole like thorough like fall like you know, through fair is like, you know, ways that like, you know, love can just like even when it like feels good can be wrong. Yeah. And horrible for you. Yeah, absolutely. And like and that was you know, like in like, you know, like after that like, you know, first big, you know, serious relationship breakup, it's like there was like you could like a lot of like quote unquote like breakup albums are like you know like things that you wallow in and like it's all like you know like wishing for yesterday like uh disintegration was, was part <laughs> of that the cure but it like, helped out but, but like spooky <laughs> you know a, uh like you know songs like untogether were just like cutting you know just cutting the fat out and like going like you know you know the, like a lot of this wasn't a tragedy it was like you know like cutting your cutting your wrist really slow yeah i mean the, <laughs> in a warm bath I, yeah that, that's what disintegration is this one is yeah. like was I like more like take it i miss you it was more like you know from the other side like hey you know what you you fucked up too right this wasn't a tragedy it was just you know is like a, a time for you to like learn and grow and like you know get, get on with it. your life yeah, yeah. because go, you man. weren't you weren't perfect and this isn't something that just happened to you right yeah on. Yeah, diving deep there. I'm gonna go into some of my bands. We talked about my buddy Valentine Loveless. That's that's the place to start with shoegaze. Mm-hmm. We went there. Uh definitely Swerve Driver though. Ray's and Mescal Head. I love those two albums. And they're from Oxford, England. And like we mentioned just a little bit before, they're a little bit more progressive rock. And they're not as dreary and they're not as slow. Mm-hmm. I love the guitars and uh I don't think you could have a Smashing Pumpkins without Swerve Driver. I'd be definitely not. Cu- I'd be curious to know if like Billy Corgan actually like listened to that shit or not. I mean, he seems like his ego's out of control, so he probably wouldn't. He, admit he probably that. he would probably would have admitted to it in like '94. Doesn't he? Isn't he a ghost hunter and all kinds of shit? <laughs> You're like, what else? Does <laughs> yeah, he do? I, I don't know if he would admit. I don't know if he would have admitted to it in like the last. I have 10 an years. answer for you guys. It's coming soon. About Billy to that Corgan? question, yes, about, uh, Billy, about Corgan Billy Corgan is admitting uh, one of his influences. Really? Oh, cool. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I know he also likes Alex Jones. Son. Does he really? I think so. Wasn't he on his show? I don't know. Yes. Oh, because Billy Corgan's a big conspiracy theorist and right. and pretty right wing. Interesting. Uh, uh, I thought you were joking, Joe. No. <laughs> but no, Swerve Driver, uh, Ray's and Mescal Head are they're great albums. Um I'd like to get Ray's on vinyl. So if anybody wants to send that to musically meditated at gmail dot com, uh <laughs> let me know and then I'll I'll send you my address. But are you a fan of them? Um, they, I, I always kind of like passed, I, I never really paid attention to them before. Uh, I listened to a raise today though. Okay. And it was like, it was surprising. Yeah. It was surprising. Cause, uh, like it was like really hard driving and like, there was a way that like, you know, they could have like, like solos and like riffs and like get more just like traditionally hard rock Yeah, and also kind of keep the whole, like, you know, a f- like it, it, it was that whole feel still, you know, even yeah. when, like the, the, the solo itself was, you know, uh kind of uh, funny yeah i don't know i don't know if it was funny <laughs> like, but it, like it felt right 
okay. for the song. Yeah. Okay, yeah, just I like the guitar trade offs and 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 then for people listening, if you're gonna go and check this out, like if you like Smashing Pumpkins, like you said, what was the album Siamese Twin? Like, yeah, or, yeah, Siamese Dream. Siamese Dream. I'm sorry. Yeah. If you like that particular album, you know this is a good place to start. And Mescal Head's got a really, really cool album cover. And I remember Bobby from uh, Cloakroom loved that particular particular album. Now, well, now I'll move on to Slow Dive. How do you say that that album? Suvlaki. Suvlaki. And then, like we talked before, my favorite shoegaz or shoegaze track is When the Sun Hits, and they're from Berkshire, England. And Sretton, yeah. once again, you said you could actually get into these guys yeah, yeah. and gals yeah. and. Yeah. We mentioned too they had that self self titled album that came out last year and it's mm-hmm. great. They're also on uh, what is that YouTube channel that we like? Is it K E X P like out of Seattle, Washington? Yeah, something like that. Uh, they're on that and it's it a K E X P or K P E X. Yeah, something, something, something like that. that. Yeah, I think you're so. Right. Yeah, look up Slow Dive on YouTube yeah. and check out that performance. Oh. It's amazing. I love mm-hmm. her vocals too. This is another good trade off with female and male vocals. Yeah, and there's something just really soothing behind her voice you know and then like the music and there's a dream pop element with them too but um yeah i that that new self-titled is a great great album and Mm -hmm. i love slow dive and uh the thing about suvlaki it's funny here's the thing like i've noticed with like a couple like shoegaze projects is that like there'll be like the actual album like like suvlaki like um like one the one biggest track on it uh um you know that like <laughs> it's all good. You got it. <laughs> we should have had the, the, the song list out but when the sun hits is where it's at it's all good it's all good yeah but it's like about you know like being in love with someone who's an addict and like oh really yeah and, and like kind of like having like not knowing how to deal with it and so it's like you know it's like a serious like you know kind of moody album but um, the name it's named after a fucking jerky boys bit is it really so is yeah Right it's on. uh when uh I forget one of them is like calling like a Greek dude and he's like he's like uh, y- your wife sucked it like she was sucking souvlaki or something. <laughs> wow, way yeah. to go, way to go, slow dive. Uh, I think, it just know, it's weird, like yeah. some serious content, but then the album's named after Jerky Boys. I like it. I feel yeah. it. I either feel that it. or either that or like again, I I I got this from Wikipedia, so someone could just be fucking with us. Right. I, I didn't. I don't think I've ever read this in like an actual publication. <laughs> <laughs> way to go wikipedia wikipedia strikes yeah. wikipedia strikes again and then I'll, I'll move on to ride um and they're from oxford england and i love the album smile and nowhere are you a ride guy john uh a little bit and i found them in the in the the wormhole or loophole of spotify sorry I, go ahead, the, go ahead. the track i couldn't remember the name it's allison Allison, that's a yeah. great track. It is. It's the best on the album. It's a favorite. And, and that's the one about being addicted to a, or not addicted to, but in love yeah. with a person that's addicted yeah. to drugs. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting. And uh, like I mentioned, nothing guilty of everything. Some newer stuff, but that's my last favorite shoegaze album. Hmm. So awesome, awesome. Now let's uh, transition into like the short-lived decline of the sh- of the shoegaze music or the movement. And the number one thing that killed it was the Britpop scene with yeah. Pulp, Oasis, and Blur. Shout and out to Oasis. I love Oasis. I'm more of an Oasis guy than Blur. Well, I, where, where are you? I'm, 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 like? a, I'm a Damon Albarn guy. Oh, okay. And I, I liked him when he, tur- when he you know, did, made Gorillaz, too. Okay. I think, yeah. How about you, Stratton, Oasis or Blur? Uh, Oasis. All right. Just because I don't know enough about Blur. Mm-hmm. But I they hated gorillas. each other, didn't I they? I like the um, Yeah, they, they had, um, I think it was like egged on by like Enemy, which is New Musical Express, a yeah. big British like alternative rock, but also very popular. Oh, yeah. A magazine. Um, it was kind of egged on. Okay. Um, one, one uh, uh, Lush, the their album right after Spooky, uh, Lady Killers, was, was full on Britpop. Like they went and abandoned the whole sound and then kind of no one really liked it Fade that much. Away. Okay. Yeah, but. But yeah, that that killed it. But more importantly, um, with that age, like, well, the time frame of it, you know, late 80s to early 90s, there's this this guy that came out. I don't know if you heard of him, but his name was Kurt Cobain. And he started the grudge movement. Tell me about him. And yeah, uh, yeah well, we all know about Kurt, but that kind of killed it because Loveless by My Bloody Valentine came out like six weeks after Nirvana's Nevermind. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. And so people are already like, I think in a different era, one where it's like where there wasn't like, you know, radio and and the record industry as it was in the 90s, where you kind of still had gatekeepers directing your, you know, where you were listening to stuff. Um, But it was because of that, you know, it's like everyone decided, no, like this, like, you know, kind of 
you know, like a uh, raw, gritty, like like relatively simple, you know, stuff coming out of Nirvana. That's like what's it? Like, that's the future right now. And so it just yeah, they had bad timing. And yeah, Nirvana def- or not Nirvana, but MTV pushing Nirvana and mm-hmm. like all the record labels in America. You yeah, know, America exactly. was sub pop and everybody wanting to kill the metal scene or the hair metal scene here. Yeah. I think it was kind of hard for a UK scene like Yeah, it's like, like sub pop sub you know? pop definitely beat uh four A D then. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's it's gonna be point. yeah, it's gonna be hard for, you know, that kind of music or that style to just beat the American press almost, you know, yeah. and, and especially the monster MTV. But yeah, Kurt Cobain kind of, you know, took a big shit on that, probably not knowingly or purposely, but yeah. And then you know, the whole grunge scene was just, just huge. For and the then 90s. right when it could have come back, then we, yeah, we got new metal. Right. That was the new big thing. <laughs> but see with new metal, I'm glad you brought that up. And like smashing pumpkins, it brought shoegaze kind of back. Yeah. You know? There was like a little nugget of it, of, yeah, in, in again, Smashing Pumpkins and Deftones. Deftones, you know, so that's what I'd like to move into is like the rebirth of it and, and some of the bands that did it. Mm-hmm. And I've obviously said nothing, but, uh, you know, uh-huh. Narrowhead, have you ever heard of Narrowhead? Satisfaction, mm, it's a good album. No, no. Okay, they they got some stuff. Uh, Waves is another band. Yeah. I like Waves. Yeah. Uh, Were is another one where they're actually, like, there's a female vocalist. Sometimes they had, like, a split with nothing that was really good. Mm-hmm. And then Audio Lux, which is a little bit more commercial and popular. I've, I've heard of, I, I've heard a little bit of Audio Lux, never having gotten really into them, though. And then M83. Yeah. Some early I, M83 yeah, stuff. Yeah, um, uh, Red Cities. Uh, wait. Red Cities, Something in Dust. I listened to the hell out of this album in like 2009, but I forget the entire title. Right on. But like yeah. Red City, something in Desert Dust. Uh, and then um, yeah. you said it before. What's the band? Uh, but, the, other, the other more commercial kind of Silver Sun Pickups. Silver Sun like Pickups. The, the, like they were like the like very much in the vein of like 19, of late 80s, early 90s. Like, oh, and oh, they're just back then. Like when I heard them. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least their first album, but M eighty three was cool because it was like the first like kind of like electronic like shoegazy band that I, I heard. Yeah, like and, synth pop, and kind there's of like synth-y. and there's a lot of like kind of dream pop bands that are just like, straight up electronic these days. Yeah, and M eighty three put out a pretty decent album last year. I remember it was Yellow. I just remember the album cover I did was not, Yellow. I did not catch that one. It was really poppy, but in a good way. There's nothing wrong with some pop, yeah, you know, no, some synth pop. Nothing wrong with it. But um, what I want to get into is. Like the resurgence, like I think the '90s is back. Like it's back, like with fashion, with I, music, and I think it. I, it I think can, it's more just like every every era since the '70s is back, and then not, and then back again. It's just like we're just right. like in a rubarous now. Yeah, and, and I think a lot of it too has to do with like how we said we'd go on Wikipedia and you start backtracking, right? Yeah, and exactly. looking and discovering these new bands, and th- with things like Spotify too. So if you and I are going to start a band. We just realized we like some of the same stuff, which is shoegaze. So let's just start a shoegaze band now. Yeah, exactly. And and it's kind of like a scene that was forgotten that's back. And they're yeah. blending it well. It's a really good genre to blend with metal, yeah. you know? Or like we said with Sunbather, you know, with Def Heaven or, uh-huh. you know, the Deftones did it. Hum did it. Like, it's a really cool, like, guitar chord progression to just blend in because you can make it heavy still, too. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. And, and with the vocals, like, more of a hush vocal and stuff and it's just weird how everything kind of comes back like it was forgotten about my bloody mm-hmm. valentine was probably the most known right but you know there's a lot of this grungy shit that's coming back and even the look and even the sound and i'm glad how like shoe is kind of yeah and it's like it's coming out of like people who like would only know about it like there's this one uh like like this grungy kind of like like i don't know um like almost uh yeah there's like a like her name is like soccer mommy and she's okay. like she's like 19 and like doing like like kind of like a little bit dream pop but mostly like you know grungy kind of uh i don't know trying to think of somebody from the 90s uh or like earlier than slater kinney who am i thinking of bjork no not bjork it was like you know more like very guitar driven oh uh, dissonant okay that okay. that kind of stuff but it's okay. like from an era that like you wouldn't have she wouldn't have had any real memories of but it's right just, on yeah, it's just the internet, basically. Yeah, the internet, it, it it brings a lot of things back. And just with the guitar and the chord progressions of Shoegaze, it just, it you could you could filter it in with a lot of different stuff. Like another album, like newer, a newer Shoegaze album is by Tidal Fight. Have you ever listened to Tidal Fight? No, I haven't. Yeah, they're an awesome band. And uh, they were more, 
post hardcore or hardcore punk, a little emo. Okay. But like with their third release or fourth release, don't quote me on that, they came out with this album Hyperview and they blended the shoegaze perfectly with like some of the post hardcore shit. Okay. You know, and then they're doing the hush vocals back, but it's a really, mm-hmm. really good shoegazy rainy album, you know, yeah. rainy day album. Okay. So check yeah. it out. I'd say Explosions in the Sky had a lot to do oh, with this. Good call. Yeah. Explosions I, I, in the Sky. I almost just completely forgot them, but yeah, they were like yeah. a big you know, proponent of like the new, um, the new like shoegaze kind of. Yeah, I'd like the one song came out a few years ago, "Anxiety Disintegration" mm-hmm. by Explosions in the Sky. That's some really good stuff to go to sleep to. Yeah, like the ear- their earlier stuff. Like I can't remember the album names right now, but mm-hmm. that's some really good shit to just chill out to. Stratton, you you want it? Explosions in the Sky, famous for doing the uh, Friday Night yep. Lights theme song. Yep. Really? It's fantastic. If you listen to like ninety nine percent of uh youtube uh motivational videos they'll throw that video on there or they'll nice. throw that song in the background i had no idea Wait i'll play it for you later please do we can I occasionally can I we occasionally... do some wim hof together some wim hof meditation absolutely okay <laughs> like you just got excited <laughs> <when I decided. laughs> it's a little inside joke but everybody check out some wim hof yeah uh, google wim hof, guys cool. some powerful stuff change your life um john another thing a question like you sent me this article too today about the uh the the Chinese shoegaze scene. What's up with that? That was a cool yeah, article. Um, a little bit backtrack on that article. Yeah, it, it's about the the whole article is basically about how um, there's like been in the last couple of years, and I think there was a couple like prominent like shoegazy bands in Japan in the early '90s, but I, their, their names escape me, and I okay. don't really don't really know much about them. But um, but yeah, it's the whole idea of like like shoegaze in the West. It's like kind of the whole like emotional and like communicative mode of shoegaze is like something it's more like you know the introverts the weirdos kind of thing whereas in like it, all of us in this room <laughs> not, me. <laughs> not me whereas like or, whereas um you know uh someone brings up in the article how like in like chinese operas like no one would say i love you directly so it's like it kind of it, it slots in perfectly with the kind of more like passive indirect like mode of communication in asia mm-hmm. i just thought that was really interesting how it's like you know it is and you spent some time there right yeah i uh, lived in taiwan for three years teaching english awesome and that's kind of how the culture is not to be subjective but you know like no, i mean yeah a there, there's a lot of it, it's no one's ever really like di- uh, compared to americans no one's ever like directly in your face about anything it's more you know you suggest to people or else it's you know rude yeah we're a culture of mouth breathers and close talkers mm-hmm. here, loud. here in america we're all loud. loud but uh no that's awesome um now we're now we're gonna transition into a little little part we call hate mail, and I I did receive some, and Sretton, do you do you have any hate mail? I have two. Okay. Why do we have so much hate mail? Well, ever people since, be hating. Ever since we fired up the cameras, <laughs> we just gave a people John, ammunition. You're, you're gonna be next. They might hate on you, but it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's uh, just get any attention, man. Any attention. <laughs> Are you gonna read right. yours first? No, go ahead. Oh, you, you we'll switch off. You have one or two or three or four? Um, just one? Just a few. Oh, damn. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Uh, dear Joe, this email goes straight to the hate. What's the deal with uh, cameras matching, not matching audio on the YouTube channel? Get it together, producer Sretten. I'm watching the YouTube channel, and it looks like a badly dubbed kung fu movie from the <laughs> 70s, except with Joe and Stretton. Uh, I'd call the movie House of a Thousand Jiggling Double Chins, or <laughs> Double Chin of Destiny. Hmm. Uh, not starring Chow Yun Fat, but Stretton's Chin Fat. Damn. And then it just says, Damn, ha, ha, <laughs> ha, 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 Jeff from Lansing. All right. Jeff hey, that's the same guy Jeff Lansing? from Lansing. He's been sending some hate. Like, like it's, called, uh, it, it's called audio. <laughs> it's called audio and video encode at different rates. All right. So Tell him, John. just John's fucking deal with it. And also, Thanks, and, and also Jeff from Lansing, like, how much you weigh, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you like a healthy weight? Like, are you 5'10, 170? Six pack. Yeah, you better have a six yeah. pack. Lansing. Shout out to Lansing. But, uh, yeah, that's, you'll see. There's so, a lot of Lansing hate. There What's is a happening? lot of Hansen. I, I don't know. I noticed, like, was some of the video is it really lagging that bad though? It's not that bad, but it is a little bit. We're figuring it out. Okay, we got a team of experts. It's a little bit it out. Yeah, we got a team of experts. All right, I have one. Um, Sretton, could you please help Joe improve his sixth grade le- reading level? Oh. 
<laughs> I was butchering some stuff. I, you know what? That's a good su- suggestion. Like, if there's something I have to read, like, I don't know what it is. It's kind of like, remember, like, being in school and it was your turn to read in front of everyone? Mm-hmm. You're like, it, 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 it. but yeah, I had some, I never had that problem. I had some hiccups. Well, I guess I did. And no, my, my reading level is not sixth grade. Yeah. But yeah, if you want to, if you want to take it, because I get a little bit nervous. Uh, I don't know why. Well, you see the way I read this mail. It's not like I'm like, the, yeah. you know, giving speeches in front of. I got another one real quick here. Yeah. What's up with the lighting in the room? While you're recording with the webcams, I've been getting a lot of that. Like, people are saying it's too dark. We like to keep it kind of chill mode here, you know. We so like to keep it a little romantic. Yeah, yeah a little romantic. I don't want to have bright lights in my face like it's an interrogation setting. Mm-hmm. So stop hating. Stop yeah. hating. All right, what else you got, Sred? Oh, dear Joe, I like Deftones as much as the next guy, but part one <laughs> of two. Damn, dude. <laughs> I know there are other bands. I know there are other bands. When is that Morrissey dedication finally coming? 52 episodes in, still waiting, still listening. Quick subject change. I really dug the hip hop lyrical show uh, a few episodes ago. Eps. Oh, he's cool. A few episodes ago. (laughs) Eps. I do enjoy the hip hop talk. Subject change again. Back. Back to the hate, baby. Oh, damn, Stratton. Tell right. Stetson to chill out with the eye contact when it's just the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> Gazing into my eyes deep. Oh, man. Staring deep into the my soul. The way he blinks. Uh, what is this? Whoa. <laughs> the, the way, way he blinks are. is a little creepy. Um, for a minute, Stetson looked like he stopped breathing and was, uh, quote, waiting to exhale. And then it says Angela Bassett in parentheses. <laughs> well, yeah, that was the, the movie with Angela Bassett. Oh. Where she like, Damn. I don't know, gets dumped by her husband or something. And then, then it Damn, says, or is that deep. still got a groove back? I forget. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're the same movie. Same cast. Yeah. And, then, and then it says, Sretten, period, stop, period, looking, period, at Joe like he just farted cinnamon Christmas cookies. Oh, boy. Signed, Dan from Lansing. Dan from Lansing. Okay. I'm not reading any of these people's names because we'll get some emails and then some voicemail hate. So mm-hmm. feel free to to send your hate. I have I have a few more real quick. Um, that one hurt my feelings. Well, John, help him out. Defend him. Defend me, John. I, I mean, you, I don't know. If, if you you fart cinnamon, that's not like an insult, man. No. That's awesome. Trust me, folks. It doesn't smell like cinnamon. No. I've been around his farts. <laughs> no. They're they were saying manly. that I look at you like your farts smell good. <laughs> Hey, maybe I don't know. Hmm. No, they don't. No, they don't. Nobody's Nobody farts, farts good. smell good in here. No, no one. It's a pretty enclosed space. Yeah, it is. It is. It's it's a little. We need a candle. That's for sure. A little candle yeah. action. All right, here we go, Joe. We we get it that you celebrate the Deftones entire catalog. Way to sport a Deftones hood. Deftones hoodie during a Deftones episode. You fanboy. Right on. Yeah, it's pretty not? harsh. Like I, I, it was it was pre thought. It was premeditated. Well, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know. They gotta hate. I mean, why in rock is that a bad thing? Like people wear jerseys to their Yeah, team. I don't know. I was feeling I was feeling it, you know. I yeah. wanted I wanted to wear my my colors, my team's colors that hate. day. But you that person has hate. a couple of Yeah. Dave Matthews shirts. Yeah, it's probably you Which would be really hate. cool. I sent yeah. that <laughs> You got Dave Math he's got subliminal Dave Matthews things in the studio, by oh. the way. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. The the vote. And then the, there's the and then, then there's the... a beer opener and I told him like okay. Don't let that face Oh, me. I, I think so. Now it's facing him. People can't see, but it's a Dave Matthews oh, that's beer right. bottle. Oh, over. okay, yeah. Because the, the last <laughs> the last episode of Gigi Stalin, like I think someone, uh, Brett or or Anthony or Gus, pointed it out, and then that that's when I started making fun of Dave Matthews and how he sang a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you guys started the episode with it. Yeah, You're just that's making right. fun of DMB right away. Yeah, bro. Why? Why the hate on the DMB, bro? Awesome, awesome. Well, that's it. That's you all. Made I have fun of all you. jam bands in that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. But you started with them. Yeah. You did. All right. That's fine. All right. Let's move on. Let's move on to the segment called I Like Don't Like What You Like. And I'm going to start off with this. Cardi B. I used to like her. Uh-huh. Okay. I did. I kind of liked uh, her. I, I, uh, I've I never gotten the, the, the big deal about her. She could rap. She could rap. Here, Here's yeah. the thing. If you put on the radio right now, like B96 or anything else that's kind of poppy or hip hop, she's on every song. Every song, she's like a guest appearance. Yeah, so I guess it's just it's like super annoying. I guess it's just like when a uh, Nicki Minaj's verse on um Kanye's uh Monster mm-hmm. was like fucking bomb as hell, and then afterwards she was like featured on everybody, and then 
uh, you know, her actual albums were meh, and then so she's a good rapper too. Her it went from being me being really excited about her to meh. Okay, that's where you're at with yeah with with Nicki yeah. Nicki Minaj now. Well, her and Cardi B got into it. What? And, yeah, yeah they did. and Nicki Minaj punched her, and she had a goose on her egg. No way, oh, Cardi boy. B. Yeah, what? yeah, yeah, <laughs> for real. I don't care. <laughs> I don't did, care. did Nicki punch her when she was still pregnant? What? Oh, that would be even better. Oh, no. That would sell more oh, papers. No. But yeah, she's she's annoying. She's on every song, uh, and. I don't know. If if you don't know who Cardi B is, just put on the radio. She's featured on every yeah, new just single. Turn on the radio. Yeah. And put it on. Um, another thing I like don't like what you like is the craft beer metalhead dude, you know? The craft beer metalhead hierarchy. Uh we get it. You listen to brutal metal, you drink brutal beer. But yeah. let's not lie to ourselves. It tastes your IPA tastes like an armpit. I mean, I'm gonna okay. say I'm gonna say this Some about people like that. I'm gonna Some say Some people this like about, armpit taste. I'm yeah. gonna say this about IPAs that also say about metal in general. Like okay, let's, let's just because Here we go. you listen to something that's like a little bit uncomfortable for other people to listen to, like metal does not make you tough and IPAs being bitter do not make you tough either. Thank you, John. Yeah. <laughs> right. Let's just get that out there. Yeah. Yeah, but there there's like this this uh, you know, this craft beer metalhead hierarchy and yeah. they're like kinda like, every other IPA is like it's like brutal, brutal destroyer, or some <laughs> fucking name like that with the uh, with like the twig letters, like the black yeah. twig letters or some shit. Yeah. So easy, Sretton, Are you are you kind of that guy after a few IPAs? No. Get a little get a little bit on your high horse. I get even cooler and, and defend I'm, and defend Dave Matthews. I'm so sick of IPAs. <laughs> the only one I like is is like the best one, Bell's. Bell's. But no, I'm more I... like I'm on a wheat beer kick. If I'm gonna drink. Okay, I mean, I like it. I just, I'm just giving some, uh, some metal heads. The shoegaze of beers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What would be a shoegaze beer? I mean, I was like a Heineken light. No, I'd say like (laughs) um, with water added to it. I, I, I'd say like a, uh, like, like a Belgian lambic. Damn, he's going, he's going deep. I, I would say they're more of like a wine, you know. Yeah, like perhaps a, like some kind which, of which beer? Actually, they just you do a- ecstasy is is the the shoegaze beer. You really? Do Molly? That's it. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna. I thought you meant the drug. I'm like, I was gonna say no. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I. Yeah. Is the drug. Which okay. which beer has uh, 500 ingredients, but still tastes like water? <laughs> Ooh, he's just it on shoegaze. Threaten does not like shoegaze. Twenty percent. Twenty percent. I actually, I was gonna say uh, a lot of my dislike or like leans very heavily on the vocals. And I know it's not like that's a background thing. Yeah, I get you. But it does. Like yeah. I, I end up liking it because I hear the music and then vocals come in and I'll be like, all right, this goes with this. It happens. It happens with a lot of music. Like some people just can't do it, you know, like with the screen, any kind of screaming vocals or growls or. Yeah, that's true. That. I, I can like that's why I've never really gotten an extreme metal because it's like growling and, and well, bl- like screeching at, at a certain point like I, I, I could do. But it's like the the kind of like screeching that like you like or like shouting that you get in like hardcore or um or like certain industrial tracks I like better than like what I would get in like time and a black place. metal yeah you know time and a place for everything like we said you're not gonna put shoegaze on if you want to go try to max out on your bench press or yeah. get ready for your local MMA fight at the uh you know the bar or the gymnasium or whatever it is you're training for yeah like, exactly you know you're gonna want to. Listen to something a little bit more hardcore. Yeah, you know? and drink an IPA. And drink an IPA. <laughs> drink, drink an IPA at the gym. Yeah, but uh, all right. Now we're gonna we're gonna close out. Uh, John, thanks again for coming. Yeah, no problem. And I I always close out on a uh, meditate on this. I'm glad to be on a you know podcast with like twenty times the listeners of mine. So. Oh, I don't know yeah. about that. <laughs> I don't know, Stratton. Yeah, we got. I like mean, you guys five get million. mail. We got That's... five five million five million listeners. I think right. Almost. Almost. All right, good, good. And hopefully we'll get some more UK guys uh, because yeah. I did look. We did have like some we Ireland some listeners UK people, and some yeah, UK, yeah. but maybe yeah. more now because this is a shoegaze thing. Yeah. Nice. And they're all from, from the UK. Mm-hmm. Uh, but any rate, at any rate, meditate on this. Um, your vibe attracts your tribe, so surround yourself with successful people. You know, sometimes you have to cut off negative people in your life in order to grow, so cut them out and uh, focus on becoming your best version. You know, it's a hard thing, you know, as we get older – You'll have some of those negative people that just want to always drag you down, and you just got to cut them out. You know, you feel me, John? Kind of. I mean, I, I don't look at it as like <laughs> I don't look at it as like some kind of spiritual holistic thing, and more like more like if people are doing shit that you don't want to do right now, and like just being around you around them, like you have to do dumb shit. Yeah. Don't don't be around them. Just cut them out. Yeah. Cut them out of your life. How about you, Stratton? I down? feel both of you guys. You feel us? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thanks, man. Feel it. All right. I feel you. 
Well, thanks again, John. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, Everybody no check out G.G. Allen and the Absurdity Junkies. G.G. Stalin. G.G. Stalin. G.G. Allen. Sorry. I mean, that's, what we, you know, yeah. the joke. And the artwork's pretty badass, too. Thanks. Yeah, that's um, uh, Brett's friend Dylan Vaughn. Yeah, Dylan Vaughn from New York. I think uh, they have an Instagram, but I don't know it at the moment. Sorry. All right, cool, man. Well, thanks again for coming on, and everybody, we'll see you next week. Adios. I'm musically meditated. <laughs> That's right. I'm musically meditated. That's right. I'm musically meditated. for my ass over there. <laughs> <laughs>